Memorial Day weekend, I've been thinking a lot about the word sacrifice. The word sacrifice, the concept of sacrifice, and um, a definition of the word says that sacrifice is the act of giving up something that you want to keep, especially in order to get or to do something else. Here's another definition that I like a lot, and it says a sacrifice is something important or precious that is given up for the sake of something more important. I love that. Something that is important, something that's precious to you, and yet you give it up for the sake of gaining something more important. For example, you all have done this. A parent sacrifices for their child's happiness. Sometimes we sacrifice really good food. I can think of myself that I could eat pizza and ice cream and cheesesteaks, and <laughs> if that could be my food, I would eat a lot of that. But we sacrifice food that we love to have a healthier body, which is more important. Sometimes we sacrifice our time to help a loved one, like an elderly parent. We sacrifice Sunday mornings. How easy it is to sleep in on a cold, rainy day, especially. But we sacrifice an easy Sunday morning to come to worship God in church. More important. And as we're honoring those today that have sacrificed their lives for our freedoms in this country, for our freedom to worship, and we know that Jesus Christ gave the ultimate sacrifice. In fact, he sacrificed his home in heaven, important and precious. He sacrificed that, that and he came to this earth with a purpose and a plan that was more important. And after he fulfilled that plan, he ascended back to heaven, promising to continue, listen to this, because this is the whole message. He ascended back to heaven, promising to continue 
his purpose through people who were willing to sacrifice their lives. Giving up things that are important for something that is more important, and in this case, eternity, eternal life with God Almighty, God the Creator, God our Father, as a family. And so as we've come off of Pentecost Sunday last week, and we know that when Jesus ascended back into heaven, there were about 120 people that made a sacrifice. They made a sacrifice to continue the work of Jesus Christ. And they waited in faith, they waited in anticipation, they were all together for 10 days and they, they gave up their own selves. They, gave, they sacrificed their own selves for something that was far bigger and far more important than their own lives here on this earth. And that's what happened on that day. I'm going to read to you from Acts 2. We've read this before. But I'm going to read to you because when we sacrifice, something big does happen. And I'm going to read right, right out of this as if we were actually there on that day. It says, when the day of Pentecost, this is Acts 2, when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together. There's the sacrifice, the beginning of the sacrifice. They were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound came and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, just as Jesus had promised. And then it goes on to say that Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, stood up and began to preach and I'm going to read to you his message because it was powerful on that day and I, I pray that it is powerful today to listen to. Peter stood up and he, he addressed them and he said, in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Now, I don't know how he orated that. Keep in mind that three years ago, this was just a, a guy, a ruddy old fisherman out fishing. And he's the one that probably gave Jesus more trouble than any, always challenging him. His faith was strong and then he doubted. And Jesus was always trying to bring him in and disciple him. And it was way back before Peter was even ready that he said, Peter, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. It's what's happening right here. And so if those words sounded powerful coming out of Peter's mouth, that was not the ruddy old fisherman. That was a man filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. And he went on, fellow Israelites, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did among you through him, as you yourselves know. He's reminding them. Remember everything we saw Jesus do in the three years. This man was then handed over to you by God's deliberate plan. Peter's getting this now. And his foreknowledge. And you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. And then he goes on and he goes all the way back to David, to scripture, and he brings out some scripture from David. Read this for yourself this week in Acts 2. And he goes on to say, fellow Israelites, I can tell you confidently that the patriarch David died and was buried and his tomb is here to this day. But he was a prophet, 
and knew that God had promised him on oath that he would place one of his descendants. Peter is getting the big picture. David, if you look at the line of Jesus, it goes right on through. Seeing what was to come, he spoke at the resurrection of the Messiah that he was not abandoned to the realm of the dead, nor did his body see decay. God has raised this Jesus to life, and we are all witnesses of it. Now he goes on to talk about Jesus ascending back to heaven. He said he was exalted to the right hand of God. He has received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit that has poured out what you now see and hear. For David didn't ascend to heaven. And yet he said and he prophesied that this was going to happen. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. Listen to this. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart. And they said to Peter, what shall we do? I'll tell you, any preacher, any Christian, and you know it. They're the most, that's the most beautiful phrase you can ever hear. Bonnie, what must I do to be saved? Kathy, can you imagine hearing that? Kathy, what must I do to be saved? Carl, one of your loved ones, what must I do to be saved? Dad, what must I do to be saved? Aren't those, isn't that a beautiful phrase? The people were cut to the heart. What shall we do? Then Peter replied, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And listen to this, because this didn't just happen on this day. He says the promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, maybe into the year 2021, for all who call on the Lord our God. And with many other words, he warned them and he pleaded with them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. And then listen to this, those who accepted his message were baptized and about 3,000 were added to their number on that day. That is what happened on that day. And there's a bigger picture because the church was born, Christianity was birthed that day. And it was all because some people sacrificed their own personal important lives for something bigger and more important. Jesus, on the night that he was arrested, talking to his disciples, he said, he promised them, if you will sacrifice your life for my sake, I will send you a helper, the Holy Spirit. And that's what happened on this day. This past week, we had the privilege of seeing the great show performed by the Blue Angels. Now, most of you know I love music. Put me in a show with music, I love it. Music gives me the chills, but I have to tell you, what a show to see the Blue Angels, the best way that I can describe this air show is that it, it was like watching a ballet in the sky, except it's with airplanes going about 700 miles per hour and at times coming within 18 inches of each other at 700 miles an hour. And I think what is so stunning about these uh, four machines and, and the two individual machines, that, that they can fly so fast and maneuver in all different directions with such precision. And I guess it's kind of needless to say that there's a lot of sacrificial practice that goes into that 
before they even perform in the air. But what I did learn is there is also some sacrifice going on while they're flying. While they are actually flying in the air, um, five of these six pilots must surrender to their lead commander, their, their commanding officer. There is one that is a commanding officer. There's just one pilot in the lead, and they call him the boss. The boss is the only voice giving direction. So when you sit, see them up there flying, the boss is the only one giving complete direction and instruction for every movement, any maneuver, maneuver and, and it's done, his voice is done in a cadence. It's kind of like listening to someone that is like the leader of an orchestra that is leading, uh, or a band that is leading with a cadence, or like a dance teacher that leads with and a one and a two and a three with a cadence. There's a cadence to that teacher's voice. And what amazes me is he is the only one that's looking ahead and out. The rest of the pilots only have to look to him and listen. His voice is coming through in their ear. And when I think of just that one voice and their, position, their precision and coming that close together, it just amazes me. When I think of the way they so carefully listen to that voice and the result is this beautiful, stunning, breathtaking, and very safe show because they're listening to that one voice and today on this Memorial Day, I just ask that we'll just stop and pause and think about sacrifice. And my question is, are you willing to sacrifice your life like these 120 people did? Are you willing to sacrifice your life for the sake of Jesus Christ and continuing his purpose on this earth? Jesus came, his purpose was to bring us all back into God's family, and he wants us to sacrifice ourselves, our own lives, to continue this work. And if we will surrender and sacrifice and listen to the voice of our boss, he will completely guide us, completely empower us, completely direct us. I want to read to you the rest of Acts 2 because the sacrifice of those 120 people that on that day led to 3,000 people, it didn't, wasn't just for that one day. Sometimes that's how we live our lives. We may come to church. We may sacrifice a time in church before God or maybe even in the morning sacrifice a time and pray. But that's not what these people did. They sacrificed their whole life to be in the presence and the power, the guidance, the voice of the Holy Spirit. Listen to the, what happened after this day. It says, then they went on, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. And everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs. And all the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property. And talk about, listen to this. Talk about their sacrifice. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day, let's go with sacrifice. Every day, they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And then listen to this. Because they were under the guidance of the boss, the one voice, the Holy Spirit, listen to this. Because of their sacrifice, it says, and the Lord added to their number 
daily those who are being saved. When I think of the blue angels and the thousands and thousands of spectators that come to watch six planes maneuvering, maneuvering perfectly, precisely, under the guidance of one voice. I think when we come together, sacrificing our lives under one voice, sacrificing our own lives which are important, something that is important, sacrificing for something. Aren't you glad those 120 people made that sacrifice back then? It's our turn now. I believe that if we will come together, sacrifice under the one voice of the Holy Spirit, I am convinced that we will see a mighty show of God happen in our day. Just like the blue angels who are highly skilled, they're highly skilled pilots on their own. And they, but they put their absolute trust in the boss when they do those shows. So today I just want to say put your complete trust in God. Receive the Holy Spirit. Sacrifice your life your very important life for something that is much bigger and so much more important than all of us. Amen.